Welcome to Statics. Moment of a force in three dimensions. Now, let's start with what we know. A force acting at a distance from a point, and whose line of action does not pass through the point, will create a moment about that point. The moment is a tendency to rotate, not just about the point, but about an axis that passes through the point. We can see that axis if we change our perspective. The moment we form is a vector. It has a magnitude the force times the perpendicular offset distance from the axis. It also has direction, perpendicular to the plane of the force vector and point O. In other words, its direction is along the axis of rotation. Positive or negative sense is determined by the right-hand rule. In this example, the vector is positive. Since the moment is a vector, we can write it in vector notation like this. Vector m is equal to vector r cross vector f where vector r is a position vector from the point you are finding the moment to any point lying on the line of action of force f. Pay attention to this. The start point and end point of the position vector matter. The start point is the point where we are computing the moment. The end point can be anywhere on the line of action of the force vector. It does not have to be the perpendicular distance we call d. The cross in this equation is the symbol for the cross product vector operation, which we will discuss in a moment. Now, the magnitude of our moment vector can be calculated as the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the position vector r times the sine of theta. Note that the magnitude of position vector r times the sine of theta is our dimension d, the perpendicular distance from the line of action to the point we are calculating the moment. So that is really not new information, just another way to get it. The angle theta can be easily found as the angle between the tails of force vector f and position vector r. That means we either slide vector r over until it is tail to tail with the force, or slide the force vector back to the tail of the position vector, like I show here. The direction of our moment vector is perpendicular to the plane on which both vector f and vector r lie. To determine the sign on our moment, negative or positive, we use the right-hand rule. We always curl our fingers from the position vector to the force vector. Our thumb then shows the direction. In this example, if I use my right hand and curl my fingers from r towards f through the magenta arrow, my thumb points in the positive z direction. Note that if I change the direction of the force and curl my right-hand fingers from vector r to vector f, drawn tail to tail, my thumb points in the negative z direction. Here's a simple example of finding my moment vector about point O. Let's say that the magnitude of our force is 380 pounds. The magnitude of our position vector is 10 inches. And the angle between the vectors when drawn tail to tail is 40 degrees. I compute the magnitude of the moment as 380 pounds times 10 inches, times the sine of 40. I get 2,443 pound inches, which is 2.44 kip inches. I determine the direction by the right-hand rule. Recognizing that the force and position vectors are in the xy plane, and curling my right-hand fingers from the position vector to the force vector drawn tail to tail, I find that the direction of the moment vector is positive z. I can write the vector in Cartesian notation as 0i, 0j, and positive 2.44 kip inches k, or just 2.44 kip inches k. I know it is the k or z direction because the vector must be perpendicular to the horizontal plane. This was a pretty simple problem since the f and r vectors were in the xy plane. But what do we do when the force and or position vectors are oriented in directions out of any of the three planes? Take, for example, this bent bar. The vertical portion is fixed at point O and extends upward in the positive z direction. It then bends 90 degrees, and the free arm extends for some distance parallel to the xy plane. A force is applied at the free end. The force could represent an attached cable or contact from another element not shown. The line of action of the force is declined from the horizontal and acts in a direction that is not perpendicular to the bar, nor is it parallel to any of the axes. It could best be defined using Cartesian notation 
and a position vector. Here is a position vector from the origin to the line of action. A convenient place to take as the end point of the vector would be the location where the force acts on the bar, since the geometry of the bar would be something we would likely know. I could find the moment the force causes about the support at point O using the equation position vector R cross force vector F. The direction of the moment vector will be perpendicular to the plane formed by vectors R and F as shown here. The sense of the vector can be determined by curling the fingers of the right hand from position vector R to force vector F when drawn tail to tail. Here is what the moment vector would look like graphically. As you can see, trying to figure out the angles here would be quite challenging. But the cross product vector operation for Cartesian notation takes care of all of it. In other words, the cross product is your friend. Here is the cross product operation written out in vector notation. Upon first introduction, it looks a little complicated, but you could derive it fairly easily. Let me show you how. First, let's note that the i, j, and k directions represent the x, y, and z directions. Every single term in this equation has three components. A moment component in the x, y, or z direction, a position vector component in the x, y, or z direction, and a force vector component in the x, y, or z direction. If you look closely at every term, each one has all three directions represented. For example, the first term is for the x direction moment component, with a y direction position component, and a z direction force component, x, y, z. The very last term has an x direction force component, a y direction position component, and a z direction moment component x, y, z. I will explain why this is so. If we look again at the x direction moment component, it is caused by a force component in the z direction offset from the x axis in the perpendicular y direction, causing a positive moment about the x axis. If the force component was offset from the origin in the z or x directions, it would not cause a moment about the x axis. The x direction moment component is also caused by a force component in the y direction offset from the x axis in the perpendicular z direction. It causes a negative moment about the x axis by the right hand rule. If the force component were offset from the origin in the x or y directions, it would not cause a moment about the x axis. There is no x direction moment component from a force component in the x direction whether it is offset in the y direction, as shown, or in the z direction. It does not create a moment about the x-axis, but it would create a moment about another axis. Here is a force oriented randomly in space. The origin of our coordinate system is indicated as point O. The tail of our force vector is at point A. I can draw in a position vector R from point O to point A. I show the x, y, and z components of that position vector. I will also show the x, y, and z components of the force vector. Let's get our cross product equation for the moment about the origin caused by force F. For the moment component about the x axis, we have the z direction force component times the y direction offset. It creates a positive moment by the right hand rule about the x-axis. We also have the y-direction force component times the z-direction offset. It creates a negative moment. Now for the moment component about the y-axis. We have the z-direction force component times the x-direction offset. It creates a negative moment about the y-axis. We also have the x-direction force component times the z direction offset. It creates a positive moment. Now for the moment component about the z axis. We have the y direction force component times the x direction offset. It creates a positive moment about the z axis. We also have the x direction force component times the y direction offset. It creates a negative moment. If we take the equation we just formed and switch the signs for the middle j term, 
we get our standard cross product operation equation written out in vector notation. Many calculators have built in cross product operations, so you would not need to memorize this equation. However, if you do need to recreate it, here is a common technique. It involves writing out a matrix with i, j, and k as the top row, the x, y, and z components of the position vector as the second row, and the x, y, and z components of the force vector as the third row. Then you take what are called the minors, with j being negative. The first minor is for the i component. Cross out the first row and the first column. Multiply the diagonal ry times fz and subtract the diagonal rz times fy. Then do similar operations for the j and k components to get the equation. Be sure to switch the sign on the value for j. There are some rules when using the cross product that you should be aware of. First, it is not commutative. Vector A cross vector B does not equal vector B cross vector A. What this means for you is that you need to be very careful when finding your moment vector. It is the position vector cross the force vector. If you do it backwards, you are going to end up with some negative signs where you don't want them. However, note that A cross B is equal to negative B cross A. When multiplying a cross product by a scalar, A, you can multiply either before you do the cross product, or take one vector or the other and multiply it by the scalar value, and the result will be unchanged. Also, take note of the distributive law. You can add two vectors before you perform the cross product operation, or you can perform the cross product on them separately first and add them together. The results will be the same. Let's summarize the key information. The moment of a force is a vector and can be found as the cross product of a position vector and a force vector, where the position vector is oriented from the point you are finding the moment to any point on the line of action of the force. The magnitude of the moment vector can be calculated as the magnitude of the position vector times the magnitude of the force vector times the sine of theta. The direction of the moment vector is perpendicular to the plane formed by the force vector and the position vector. Sense is determined by the right-hand rule from position vector r to force vector f. For vectors in Cartesian notation, apply the cross product using this equation. One more thing. A resultant moment of a system of forces can be found by summing the moment of each force. How are you feeling at this point about the topic? Watch the following example videos to see how to apply this information.